This is Anderson Penn's podcast episode 211 for Tuesday. <laughs> is today January 3rd? No. I don't know what day yes, this is. Yes, it is January 3rd. It's January 3rd. Yes, it is. <laughs> 2017. Normally you get the year screwed up, not the day. Um, this is Brian. This is Lisa. I just had a great idea. What's that? Well, I can't tell you. No, okay, all right. <laughs> it has to do with the kick line and the music and the staff. Okay. Like AP Rockets. <laughs> Kim, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> um, here we are, 2017. Um, we made it. Inventory's done. I'm so excited. <clears throat> yeah, it's mostly done. What? A couple last minute, oh, uh, last minute things uh, for those of us in the retail world. Um, Christmas was killer. Um, we had a really good season, and we. But we spent uh, a good chunk of December working on inventory, probably the last two weeks. And uh, Brian and I have traditionally spent New Year's Eve um, doing inventory. And we actually were home for the holiday, and we just went in on the first and tweaked a couple things for just a couple hours. And that was actually a a pleasant (laughs) surprise. Yeah, it was real good. So... um... Uh, those of you who have been in inventory or in retail before and understand uh, what that's all about, but uh, here we are. Um, I was actually up at midnight. Yes. Uh, when the ball dropped, so to speak, um, I was actually at my computer at exactly midnight and making sure I had everything grabbed. Uh, so that was that, and you came up with a new idea for New Year's this year. Uh, I caved. You, you tell everybody people, I caved. It? Brian. We've mentioned before in Columbus this year, um, we picked up a couple pens for Brian, and one was for Christmas, which he received, and he was very excited. Yes. And the other was intended for uh, Valentine's Day. And we already planned, we were going to take it out of this big giant box and just um, bring it, It's, it's a big box. Uh, and we were only going to bring the pen with us to L.A. because the L.A. show is over, um, it's always right around uh, Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why I, I just, you just looked so pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> it's after dinner and you were doing the dishes and I'm just sitting there and we're New talking, Year's New Year's Eve. And Lisa says, you know... I think we ought to have a New Year's Eve pen. And, and I just about choked. <laughs> so you know, actually, no, I, you started out and you asked, do you have a, pre- a pen for Valentine's Day? Is that what it was? You asked me first about the you, pen. You had the pen for Valentine's Day. Did you have anything lined up after that? Okay. And we had just gotten notice that the Sailor King of Pen Sky... Right? Yes. Has sailor, been discontinued. Sailor, sailor Pro Gear Sky. Yeah. Yes. The King of Pen. Well, all of them. Okay. The full size, the so slim. They're, they're all discontinued. All of the Sailor Skies are being discontinued, including the King of Pen, which Brian had his eye on. And I stealthily... I see... <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I do this thing. So when I order the pens, if it's something I really like, I have to... You're not going to test the waters. We have this rule in the store... If it's in the case, if it's, in the it's case, for sale. It's for sale. And if it's something I really, really like, I pull it out. But if I'm not sure, I leave it in the case. And if it stays in the case too long, I know it's not meant to be. But I usually order it in the nib that I think I'm going to want. So just in <laughs> case, I can reach into the case and say, well, you know, there it is. It's the nib I want. We're, we're good. Um, and I know that we had ordered a King of Pen um sky for brian well that we had some on order <laughs> it was for me <laughs> i well it is I see, now <laughs> i hedged my bets though because they only come in medium and broad and i ordered one of each yeah so we could have them. that way i could just pick so i decided that brian could have the former valentine's day pen for new year's and i said you know if you really want a pen we can get the king of pen sky for your for valentine's day because we know that they have some in california and we can get it long before then and if you want you can have the ebonite for new years which brian was completely not expecting because usually 
I'm the one saying absolutely not. Um, no. Well, of course, my immediate question, and, and all you got married guys out there are going to back me on this. What do you want? What do you want? <laughs> That's my question. <laughs> you know, um, you know. And, and the, the issue wasn't cost, and I will be, Goodness. it's going to be on, on video. <laughs> you have documenta- You have documentation that I'm saying the discrepancy in price is fine. Um, there was a pen, another sailor that I'd been eyeing for quite a while and never pulled the trigger. Um, sometimes like the metallic blue, the metallic purple and the persimmon that came in a couple weeks ago. Um, those were a little bit <laughs> Lisa just walked urgent. out with three, <laughs> three boxes. For Christmas. For, yeah, for and Christmas. She yanked them up the next day. So for New Year's, wait, uh, I decided I would take the Sailor Pro Gear Slim Frambois. And Which is I, a rather French sounding name for a Japanese company. I know. It's kind of cool. Um, it's not burgundy. It's not red. It's not fuchsia. It's really a, a really pretty color. And I've, I've looked at it. I've looked at the blueberry. I've, you know, I've got several purple. I've got a ton of them. <laughs> she opened up her case today. Pro Gear Slim, Pro Gear Slim, Pro Gear Slim. <laughs> Progress Slim, Progress Slim, Progress Slim, Progress Slim, Slim. And I know she had like two or three of them that weren't in the case. So I got uh, the Frambois. And then um, we had to pick ink to put in it. So it took longer well, to well, actually pick the ink than to decide on which nib size. What, uh, what, 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 you're not, what we forgot to mention is, is so we're having this discussion over <laughs> doing dishes. And we look, Lisa looks at me, you know, like, well, do you want to go? To let's store? just go right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking advantage of this while I can, and um, so we now we, it's half a mile to the store. Yeah, it's half a mile. So we zipped on over. We went in. Brian grabbed his pen and clutched it hard. I, I almost went in slippers because I mean it was. It was. Who's gonna know, right? Or did New we Year's, go in slippers? I don't even. Remember. I think we did. I think we did. It was New Year's Eve. Who cares? Nobody's down. The, well, there were people on the outdoor, yeah. But. Uh, so we picked out ink. And I ended up going with um, Diamine Red Dragon, which I believe that Dave uses sometimes when he signs um, customer invoices that does. are shipping out. It's a nice color. It's a really nice color. I'd never used it before. I guess I always thought it was too dark or too brick or something, but it's a perfect color for this pen. And I'm very excited. Yeah, it goes, it goes real well with that pen. Um... But there's no free lunch. And so the deal is... No, there's not, boys and girls. <laughs> so the deal is that in order to earn the New Year's pen, um, Brian and I have to do something. So we have to use the New Year's pen for the entire month of January. Every single day, not exclusively, but... Oh, I'm going exclusively on this well, one. Well, that's fine. Um, I can do it. You have to use your New Year's pen every day in the month of January, except pen shows. Yeah, pen shows gets a little dicey. You know, sometimes you need the convenience of a vanishing point and click, boom, done. Or a ballpoint. Um, but uh, this is, uh, yeah, ballpoint. Jeez. Well, that way if somebody steals it, I'm okay. Well, who's going to steal it? Well, I shouldn't say who's going to steal a pen <laughs> at a pen show. It's happened. It happens every year, unfortunately. Uh, this, is, this is my baby. Um, and... If, if you don't look close, well, there, there's no way to tell from the picture, but uh, if, if you see this pen in person and you don't look close, you may mistake this for the standard uh, resin king of pen. And it looks exactly like the resin king of pen, except it's ebonite. And it has these, you know, the double cap band configuration. Um, it's, it's gorgeous. It smells like ebonite. You know, and for those of you... Who, Love the smell of ebonite. I'm constantly rubbing this pen. Um, it's just weird. It's it's awesome. It's it's it it's fantastic. Like tire. It does. It does absolutely. <laughs> and um, that's how you know it's rubber. It smells like or it, it smells like burning tires. And um, this pen is no longer made in this configuration. And uh, you know, like I mentioned before, we we saw it on Joel's table, and he had it on his table for a year. And I had picked it up a number of times, but I never really. Fondled it. Uh, yeah, I never really. And one day I looked at it and I said, you know what? The threads on this pen 
are not as dark as the section. And that's a dead giveaway, especially with, with Sailor because they use a resin section. And uh, I smelled it, rubbed it, sure enough, Ebony. So that's what I did. Um, so I had a really awesome idea. You did. Look you at had that. A, you had a really awesome idea. Um, are we going to talk and, about the next item? Yep. And what okay. did you put in said pen? Oh, what did I put in said pen? Um, uh, Sailor Yamadori. Um, in, in the, the which, which wasn't the, the deliberating moment. Um, what was, was which nib I wanted. And the pen came with a medium. There was uh, a broad nib option available uh, for easy swap. And I said, you know what? I'm going to dip the medium, see how it is. And it was perfect. And which is unusual for me because I normally go to a broad. Um, but uh, I kept the medium. Yamadori, it's great. Love Boom it. done. Mm -hmm. So far, um, we're having a good time using them every day. And... Uh... I don't know. It's. I, I think it'll be fun. To use is it, it like every your day. ninth Pro Gear Slim? Is that like your ninth King of Pen? No, it's only my fourth. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so, for asking. Yes. Um, so, on Saturday, New Year's Eve, we uh, worked at the store, and then we came home, um, deciding not to do inventory. It was mostly done. A little bit to do on Sunday, and um, we worked on some personal goals, some business goals, you know, resolution kind of things. And talked about, as most company owners do, what worked this year, what didn't, what we'd like to change, what we'd like to grow, get rid of, etc. And one of the things was uh, a little bit more personal time. So we were talking about the podcast. And for four plus years, we have been doing the podcast 99% of the time, 95%, Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. And to be honest, it's just really an inconvenient time uh, to be completely transparent. It, we <laughs> rush home. <laughs> we have to do dinner, whatever else we need to do, get everything ready for the podcast. And then depending on how long everything takes, there's time we're just kind of waiting. Yeah, it's the waiting time is a killer, so, you know. And then by the time you're done and you finish up a couple things after the podcast, the evening's mostly shot. It's too early to go to sleep, too late to really do anything. So we decided to try 7 o'clock uh, today. <laughs> and uh, we're thinking about moving it to a completely different day and time. And I'm kind of excited about it. Yeah, we'll give it a try. You know, I, I, I like the 7 o'clock time slot, I'll be yes. honest. Um, short of the fact that I, I decided, um, perhaps foolishly, to uh, to install some updates on my machine here before we started, <laughs> which left me in a, in a little bit of a panic, um, 20 minutes to go. Um, you know, I, I like the time slot, but um, we are looking at doing a Wednesday, 10 a.m. Central Time, uh, time slot. Uh, the majority, probably a strong 95% of the people who watch a podcast watch it after the fact anyway. Um, you know, there's a possibility some people could, could watch during the day. Um, but uh, this way, if we do it during the day, we can do it at the office. Um, you know, we have, we have the help of, uh, of Jason, uh, just in case there's any technical difficulties, and he's been very helpful with that. Um, we can run down to the store if there's any last minute things we need to pull or find out are arriving or whatever. Um, and it would be nice to have uh, to, to kind of retake that uh, Tuesday night. Of course, that being said, we've also agreed to take Thursday <laughs> nights and we're going to work late in the office. So, um, yeah. But at least kinda, that's a conscious it decision. It kind of balances out. Yeah. A bit, but uh, anyway, so uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, Wednesday, 10 a.m. next week. It also will work better during uh, <coughs> during weeks that we have pen shows. Uh, like uh, we, I didn't even put on the, the script for this week. Next week. Next week is the uh, the first pen show of, of 2017, uh, the Philadelphia Pen Show. Uh, and you know, being able to do the podcast on a Wednesday morning is, is going to be awesome. There's none, none of this, okay, well, we got to stop packing to, to do the podcast thing, you know. Yep. Um, so anyway, uh, keep, keep off for that, but, uh, Philly's going to be fun. Um, a good, good segue right into that. Uh, we are hoping for good weather for the oh first time in 
years. Last year, snow. Last year, the big snowstorm. Year before, ice storm. Or storm was there something the year before? There usually is. The year before it was that. I don't think it's Baltimore. Well, yeah, there's usually some some big snowstorm some or ice storm or drama. something. Yeah. So, uh, but I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. We've got some, you know, some of our friends uh, from all over the world are going to be there. Uh, first time of the year, we've all had a little bit of pen withdrawal since for some of us. Uh, it's only been a few months, but some people couple it's been, days. you know, D.C., a couple of days. For you? For me. You just got a pen. Well, I know, but, you know, I'm talking pen shows. Oh, okay. I'm talking, All right. you know, um, you know, some some people, they make they make the big ones, they you know, and then their local shows. So, um, anyway, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it'll be fun. So, we'll talk, we'll talk a little bit more next week about that uh, for those that are going, uh, what the schedule is like, and see if there's any last-minute changes to the, to the, the show schedule. Oh, we got some cool stuff in this week. Should we? We did. Should we Let's whip through this. I don't, don't want to. I don't want to whip through this. It's a, it's a bad way way to say it. Um, well, you know, we hate to be sales pitchy. Yeah, this but is some a, of this is really this is cool. A cool pen. I like this. Um, you know, I, I I I make no qualms that I'm a Mont Blanc fan. Okay. Uh, I have been before before we were dealers. I've been a Mont Blanc fan for a while, um, and this is the this is the Miles Davis. Great character, special edition. Just came in uh, in this last week. You know, they did a nice job with this. They did a nice job. Um, you've got uh, the mouthpiece is incorporated into the barrel end. Uh, it's a piston filler on the fountain pen, uh, of course. Um, you've got the valve buttons uh, on the clip. The clip is nice, little spring clip action, nice engraving. Uh, the nib is just outstanding. Um, you got to take a look at this nib. This is this is really great. Um, you got Miles Davis there. It's cool on the nib. Nice, nice, nice looking nib. Um, but uh, it's amazing engraving. It's uh, yeah. It's 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 a nice a nice looking pen. Nice weight in the hand. Uh, my only real beef with most of the Mont Blanc special editions uh, and limited editions is they 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 have seemingly have this philosophy that none of them should post. Uh, and this one does not. Um, you know, the, the Shakespeare was really close. But still no cigar. But no cigar. But but the pen is the pen is a little bit longer, too. They designed them long enough that they're comfortable. They're like a Twisby 580. It is comfortable long enough on Posted. Um, so, you know, there you go. Uh, nice black uh, chase. Looks like black chase is the, the popular theme this year. Um, kind of barrel. Um it's good stuff. Come a fountain pen, rollerball, ballpoint. So those all came in, and uh, this is one of the great shots uh, that uh, creative uh, Jason and uh, Steph uh, did this week. Uh, got they my, rock. My trumpet in there, and uh, the ballpoint and the rollerball. Um, so uh, that came in. That was fun. And along with uh, that, now this is not necessarily new, but we just finally got this up. And, and we have played with this a little bit in the store. The, and you may have heard about this, the Mont Blanc augmented paper. Now, the picture you're looking at um, doesn't look like anything exciting, but it's a really... You know, Mont Blanc is not necessarily an innovative company. Nope. They're very classic. Mm -hmm. They stick to the same thing. It works. You can uh, get any color you want as long as you want black. This is really this is nice. a step into... Not even the current era, but the, the future. This is really a big step for them. Uh, why don't you explain what it does? Well, so... Since it's techie. Augmented paper is, is, a, is a package. It comes with a, a very special Starwalker ballpoint pen and a, a nice leather-bound cover that comes with a notebook. Um, and basically what happens is behind the notebook... When you press the pen on the notepad, there's a connection that uh, figures out exactly what you're writing and where you're writing. And there's an actual iPhone app or an Android app that you can install on your phone and you can transfer all your notes in digital format. You can turn them into text. You can draw on them. You can even uh, erase things. Uh, it remembers... Uh, what you wrote in, of course, in the order, so you can actually back out a word if you want. Um, you hit a button, boom! It goes to the, it goes via Bluetooth to your phone. It's it's a pretty neat, 
a neat thing. Um, and it's a nice looking case and the, the, the refills are, are, you know, you can get new refills for it so it's not a one and done kind of deal. Um, it uses a, a mini style refill um, and it comes with several extra refills and uh, you know, it's a, it's a nice, nice package. And it's not that, it's priced reasonably, I think. You know, for a business person, uh, I think this is really impressive. It's, it's Montblanc still sticking to a fairly classic pen, one of the newer updated pens, but um, going high tech. It's, it's mm -hmm. really an interesting step in the right direction for them, mm -hmm. and it's, it's really cool. You can send your document, like I say, you can convert to, convert to text, and you can send them right to you know, your favorite, uh, I think you can send them to Word and all that stuff. Um, but uh, a neat, neat device. I, I, I have to admit, I accidentally, <laughs> accidentally took the pen apart. <laughs> what? <laughs> Which I don't recommend anybody doing. Um, but uh, it actually comes with a tool to remove the refill. Mm -hmm. uh, so you don't take the part, the pen apart in a traditional manner. There's a tool that latches onto the refill. You pull the refill out, and um, and there you go. So um, very cool. That uh, that was the big thing today. Uh, we got that up, and it's kind of an interesting uh, interesting package. So nice nice packaging, everything. It, of course, Mont Blanc does everything nice. So um, that's the Mont Blanc corner of the podcast <laughs> for the week. And now you go to the opposite corner. Uh, what you know, as it happens every year, uh, and I'm not quite sure how. Uh, we always seem to find things during inventory time that we didn't know we had, <laughs> which is always a little fun and a little scary. And uh, we discovered we had um, a couple bottles of Omas ink. Uh, we are down to one bottle of Omas violet, but if you're looking for the now discontinued, now, what's the word? Dead company? It's dead. She's uh, dead, Jim. <laughs> Well, you were, um, were going to hit me, weren't you? I, was. I saw you. You had yeah. your. <laughs> um, so we've got one bottle of Omas Violet left. So if you want it, it's on the site. And no um, box. No box. It's yeah. you know the label's got a little you know it's it, it's it's been ruffled around, but it, the, the ink is perfectly fine. Yep. I think we had I think on our one of our last shipments maybe we had a bottle leak or something that stained the box and, and we threw the box away. I don't know what happened. We were going to use it for samples, and Chris pulled it. Out. Hey, what have we got this? You know. Yep. So. And. Uh, as most companies do this time of year, we also added a number of things to the outlet. Pens, paper, and ink. So definitely check that stuff out. I was hoping some of it would move so we didn't have to count it, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, that's that's how you find things, right? You, 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 you see what is in inventory at the highest cost, and then all of a sudden you realize you have 75 of this pen in stock, and... I mean, you know, or, oh, where did that come from? 24 bottles of this that you probably should only have a half a dozen of. But We had um, that? Y yes, we did have that. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. But, you know, some some stuff you can't mark down, some stuff you can. So um, there's some interesting things things on closeout. Um, well, it's also a good time to see what you've had for a long time, what moved, what didn't move. Typical retail inventory decisions to make at the end of the year. So we've added some things to close out. Um in less than two months or right about two months we'll be in LA and a lot of the companies will have new lines new products mm -hmm. um, so we need to make room on the shelves yeah yeah it usually happens that way um, new stuff in, in LA so we'll see we'll see who's got what and I know uh, there's gonna be new stuff coming from Aurora and uh, Hugo Boss usually seems to refresh around that time um, Retro 51 new stuff will mm -hmm, be coming soon. Mm -hmm, yep. So, uh, and speaking of which, uh, do we want to talk about a couple of discontinued items that we uh, we discovered today? Speaking of Retro 51. Yep. Retro um, 51 discontinued the Marlin fountain pen. That was the blue marbled. And the Calico Rollerball. And I think we are down to one of the Calico yeah. Rollerballs. And I think that might be That's it. That's it. The Marlin yep. fountain pen is done, but... Uh, the, uh, the calico is a nice, and that one has been, and wasn't that the one when we first started with Retro, they sent us an extra pen to do as a giveaway, and I think they sent that one. Maybe. They sent Because it was one of the deluxe pens, and we had a little giveaway, and it was, uh, it was a nice looking pen. It's uh, it's that, you know, that orange and black, and it's got the, 
the gold trim and um, you know a nice nice pen. Um, also, um, the Edison Perlet Lapis Lazuli Flake uh, is being discontinued um, with uh, potentially maybe I don't know uh, something new to replace it at some point. Um, but uh, if that's a pen that's been of interest, uh, that pen is on its way out. We are down to the last one. Uh, and seems... Edison is out. Edison is out. So um, if that's something you it is a good color. And, and, and yes, you are correct. That is one of the newer, the pearlettes that uh, replaced the violet. Um, so it hasn't been out on the market very long. There's not very many of them uh, with respect to the others. Uh, so if that was, that's a nice color too. Yeah. I really like that one. It's too small uh, for you. you just it is too small for me. I did get a pen, yes. Thanks for reminding <laughs> me uh, every day for the next 27 days. Yep. Um, but um, it's a nice pen. long drive to Philly. Yeah, long drive to Philly. <laughs> uh, number five size nib, and so that, that is available. I've got one of those left. Um, that's the discontinued wrap. Yeah, I think. I think so. There might be some there might be some special things that are going up. Lisa was digging through the case uh, back there. Oh, yeah. Um, she found a couple things that we can we can live without, and I, I, I'm, I'm feeling pressured that maybe that might be the case for me, but uh, we'll see. Well, you know, it's a good time to do that. New Year's yeah. cleaning, decluttering, <laughs> start fresh, make room for new stuff yeah. kind of thing. That's always been my motto, and Brian's not quite of the same mindset. No, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I, I make my purchases with intent to keep for life for, for the most part, uh, so I, I try not to make too many mistakes. Um, there is a question in the chat. Uh, do we know what Schaefer is coming out when when Schaefer's coming out with a new line? Uh, web, website is uh, come back in the spring. Uh, you know as much as we do, quite quite honestly. Um, with uh, we hope for the best since Cross took it over. It's been kind of a roller coaster ride. Some of the good stuff has been uh, discontinued almost as quickly as it came out. Um, you know anything that's got a color in it has been discontinued. Pretty much. Um, which is, is sad. If it's black or chrome, they have it still. <laughs> um, uh, I was disappointed when the 300s got kind of chopped in half. Mm -hmm. uh, we had some nice colors, those blues. Yeah, those the were grays pretty. were really super nice um, and, 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 and very popular. Um, I, I'm hoping forward to a, a full revamp, unlike uh, the Parker revamp, which seemed to be kind of minor in, uh, in, in, in character. You know, we're going to add a couple fins to the feather on the clip and call it a, a redo i, I don't yeah. think so. so it's it's been a little disappointing since uh kenro um no longer distributes um schaefer and, and cross bought it it really has not um had much innovation or excitement about the line so well maybe maybe, maybe now that cross has had it for uh what a year and a half now um what else can they chop? Well, well, maybe maybe they can actually add something. I mean, you know, they don't necessarily have to. I, I think the last new thing that Schaefer did was the Tyrannus, and I, I'm not certain that was maybe uh, at the time it was it was innovative for Schaefer, um, and I applaud them for that. But I think the execution maybe was not quite where it needed to be. Putting the name name on the uh, um, right on the front like. Uh, the front of the hood, I think, was just a little bit too too much, um, and and it didn't. It wasn't a big, it wasn't a popular pen. So yep. um, maybe they'll come out with a new model. I mean, they have to at some point. So no, not necessarily. Nah. Have you seen the crosses? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, we don't know. As soon as we know, we definitely will tell you. Um, but um, that's that's what we know. Yep. Um. Is that a, what else do you got? Do we got anything else this week? No, new blog post that Kim wrote will be up on Monday. Okay. About pen resolutions. I resolve to buy <laughs> no. more King of Pens this year. No, pen related. What well, is pen related? No. No? That doesn't count. I think it counts. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, I think that's about it uh, for this week. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, remember, next week, tune in. It will be Wednesday, 10 a.m. Um, for those of you listening after the fact or on iTunes, you won't even know the difference. Uh, we'll more talk about pens, ink, and paper. Cool. Follow our blog for news, ink reviews, and uh, lots of other stuff. And uh, check us out on all social media as Anderson Pens. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a good night.